Hello, Ward Bell here for Breeze.js. In this video, we'll go from file new project to a running Breeze example in just two minutes. Guess we better get started. File new project. Do it in C Sharp, a web, and we'll do it as an ASP MVC4 web application. Could do it as an empty web application, but slightly more complicated, and most people will want MVC. Let's uh, name it something like Zephyr. Now we could pick uh, any of these templates, but the fastest one and the cleanest one to use is the empty template. So let's use that. And now we have our project. The next thing we want to do is we want to add Brace to it and we're going to use NuGet to do that. So we'll manage our um, NuGet packages here and it brings up all the choices. Let's go to the official site and look for Breeze uh, MVC. And you'll see that we have two choices, a, a base package, which is what we usually use, and a client sample, which adds some, uh, well, adds a sample. And we're going we're gonna to do that here, and then we'll back out and go back to the base package. So we're going to click install, and it does a whole bunch of good stuff. One of which is to add Entity Framework, and I'm going to accept that. And it's done. And as you can see, it depends on that uh, base package, as I mentioned. And we have a readme, which tells us what we can do. One of the things we can do is we can try and run it. So let's do that now by following instructions and pressing Control F5. Here it is uh, displaying in Chrome. We have some uh, sample data showing here. These are to-dos and a message area telling us that we had queried it and that we got the queried items. Uh, here they are. Uh, we're free to say that we actually did wake up here. That says we're done. And maybe we could um, uh, modify this and tell the world that they should try Breeze today. Uh, so we're, we've made two changes here and now we can save them. Notice it says we uh, save the changes. We know we've saved them because if we refresh the browser, they're back. And the one that we had marked as done has disappeared. Here we are, try Breeze today. Uh, if we check this, uh, right now we're filtering uh, with our queries to just the ones that are not done. If I click this, you see they're back and I did indeed wake up. And that's pretty much what you can do with a sample. We're back in the solution and looking at the readme again. What did this particular package add? Well, let's scroll down and find out because it tells us. It tells us, first of all, that uh, it also installed the base Breeze MVC4 web API NuGet package, which brought in some references and some of the Breeze uh, JavaScript files and so forth. And then on top of that, it laid in the sample application, which we'll review, working back to front from, from the model on the server to the client. So the first thing we see is that we added some uh, code first uh, stuff for Entity Framework, and we'll find all of that in the Models folder. So what we have is the simple to-do item, and it's really simple, uh, looking just like this. And then uh, we need a DB context for it, and it doesn't get much simpler than that. Because we wanted some test data to begin with, we have an initializer, and that's what that is. And you can see some of the values here that you saw on, uh, earlier uh, in our demonstration. Next, we're going to find two controllers. They'll be in the uh, controllers folder. This one is the Web API controller. It inherits directly from API controller and it's endorned with a Breeze controller attribute. This is very important. It sets up the Web API pipeline for this controller in a way that Breeze demands. For example, it adds a JSON formatter that is set up for Breeze, and it adds an OData action filter, which will take the query string of a query from the client and apply it to an iQueryable. Notice the three action methods, the first two are typical of every Breeze Web API controller. The metadata method returns metadata describing the model, our to-do item, to the client, 
and the save changes post method receives a JSON object that describes a change set of entities coming from the client that the controller should save. And then there's the to do's query action method, which returns an I queryable of our to do item. We only have one query action method in this controller because we only have one entity type. But if we had more entity types, more that we wanted to expose to the client, then we could expect more of these I queryable query action methods. Now, all of these methods are able to be very simple because they rely on a breeze.net EF context provider to do the dirty work. The EF context provider defined up here at the top wraps the model's DB context, our breeze sample context in this case, and mediates between this controller and the entity framework DB context. Breeze is going to take care of all of that plumbing for you. This is an MVC controller because this is an MVC app. And as you can see, it says Breeze sample shell and it has an index method. So by convention, we'll expect to find here in views a Breeze sample shell uh, and an index CSHTML, which is our view. Let's open that up. The most interesting part of it is probably this section in here in the body which is where all the to do's appear and the checkboxes appear and you can see sort of highlighted in green here the knockout data binding that binds this view to a knockout enabled view model that we'll be looking at in a moment and at the bottom of the file we have our scripts so we have our third-party scripts and you can see we're using jquery knockout Q, which Breeze uses for promises, and then Breeze itself, followed by two application scripts. All of these scripts were either added by the base package, that's Q and Breeze, or by this client sample. Going over to the Solution Explorer, we find the scripts that I was talking about, the third-party scripts here, and in a subfolder we find the two app scripts. Now the logger does nothing more than paint those messages that we saw at the bottom of the screen below the to-dos. The real action is inside the sample view model. This sample view model holds everything that really drives the application all in one file. That's not really a good practice, but then this is more of a demo and it's trying to get you going in Breeze. The file is structured as uh, what's known as an IFE, or Immediately Invoked Function Execution, I-I-F-E, um, which basically just means that you've got an anonymous function wrapping everything. We're going to pass window in, which is the global namespace, and call it root. And with that in hand, we're able to extract the knockout library as KO and our logger as logger, and then we're ready to proceed with the breeze stuff which begins by establishing the service name, which is really the route to our uh, Web API controller. And with that, we're uh, ready to new up uh, a Breeze Entity Manager with that service name. We'll call that Manager, and that's going to be how we access data. Next comes the View Model Object, uh, which will be bound to the view in index.cshtml. It uh, exposes four members on its surface. First, the uh, array of to-dos, which is a knockout observable array. Uh, then a Boolean uh, observable that is going to be bound to that checkbox, that include done checkbox that will determine whether we show all of the to-dos or um, uh, just the to-dos that aren't done. Uh, there's a, uh, a save link on the page, and that's going to be bound to the save uh, in the save changes operation. And finally, um, we want to hide the, the, the view and all that templating stuff until the data arrives. So, so the show Boolean observable will stay false until we get data, which is what we're going to do in the next step with that get to do's method. Uh, that will make an asynchronous call to go get to do's. And while it's working, we'll continue on here and subscribe to that include done Boolean observable that we um, just created because when somebody checks that checkbox, what we want to do is call get to do's again uh, to fetch the data. 
Next comes the really uh, important step of binding this view model to the view, and, and that's what the KO apply bindings does. Everything below this point is, is kind of private and is really what implements the things that I was just talking about. Here's our get to do's method, which begins by creating a query object that uh, speaks to the to do's action method on our controller. And if the include done flag is false, which it usually is and certainly is at the beginning, then we're going to add a where clause to that query to say, hey, you know what? We do not want the done to do's. Is done equals false. Now, if somebody clicks that checkbox saying that they want to include the duns, then we're not going to add the where, uh, the where clause. But, but usually it's unchecked, and so we are adding the where clause and restricting it just to the active uh, not yet done to do. Then we hand that query to the manager and ask it to execute it, which it will do asynchronously, returning a promise. And, and when it comes back, if, we, if our query succeeded, uh, then we're going to call a query succeeded method, and if it failed, we're going to call a query failed method. The query succeeded method uh, announces uh, the wonders of our success, and then takes the results that were sent back from the server and pours them into that to-do's observable array so that they appear on screen. Oh, and also we turn that show flag on because now that we've got results, we want to see them. If the query failed, well, we have this method down here that will just uh, show it in the logger in a nice red message. Now, when somebody clicks the save link, that's going to be bound to the save changes action, which will take the one or more uh, change to do's that we have uh, in cache and ask the manager to save them, which will route its way back to the controller. Uh, yeah, that too is an asynchronous operation, and if it succeeds, we're going to report our success, and if it fails, we'll report that we failed. I want to reiterate that this is just demo code. I mean, there's some good ideas here, but you're not going to really build a to-do app, and uh, you just really use this particular NuGet package to get your feet wet, get a feeling for how, how Breeze works. And once you've done that, uh, and you want to get going building your own application, well, you want to get rid of all this stuff. And... And that's pretty easy to do. You just close everything up, uh, come back up here, right click, manage NuGet packages, and go to the installed packages. And what we want to do is get back to this baseline here. So we're going to uninstall the client sample. Now, you don't want to uninstall all the things it depends upon, just the sample. So you say no here. And it's done. And now we're back to where we want to be. We do have just the scripts that we've added that relate to Breeze. And we, we do have some of the Breeze Web API references. But otherwise, we've got no controllers, no models, no views. We're ready to get going again, almost from scratch, but with our Breeze installed. Thank you for watching our session on the Breeze NuGet packages. You know, there's so much more to learn about Breeze at www.breezejs.com. Hope you come see us and hope you're enjoying your breeze.